Okay, YouTube, let's go. Uh, right, this will be a work through of how I made the little James Bond snippet. History isn't kind to men who play God. Alright, so that was it. It was only a couple of seconds long, five seconds. But it consisted of four shots the opening, the middle two, and then the final ones there. And this is how I did the uh, middle of the shots one by himself standing there. I showed you this one just because it was the more complex to do. This took about an hour to do, I sped it up. So it's not too tedious watching me draw every line and colour everything. I basically did it on layers line art, colour, shadow, highlight. And then I exported it to PNG uh, over the alpha. Right, this is the format of each folder. So you've got your footage, your keyframe, your mask, the original clip that you made the PNG sequence from, and the green screen. Now, if you do on my previous is it, I'll show you how to do the masks and how to do the PNG sequences. This is just a quick walkthrough of how this was set up. So this is the first sequence I did. So I mess around with the settings a little bit. I hope that's 1.5 just so it follows the actual footage of the keyframe more than the footage or vice versa, depending on which one you mess around with. Uh, the flicker and everything, I brought that down a bit because I do want it to look a bit juttery animation wise and I put it to high. This will, I've got a rubbish Lenovo laptop like I've said before and that will lengthen the time but the results are better. If you've got a beefier laptop or PC, it's not too bad. Right, then what I do is I export it into After Effects as you can see here. So make sure I put the frame rate to match what I did, so it's 12 frames per second and then it automatically bumps it in. I made this nice and simple, I've just done one keyframe for each scene because there's not much movement in there. I've not done the lips separate or anything on this one, this is just a quick walkthrough on how I use After Effects to go through this process. So yeah, I'm just checking the footage, see if it's all good. If it was a bit jittery or not, I might have added another keyframe and rendered out again, but this seemed all right. So then what I want to do is I want to bring in the original footage to lay underneath this. So I'm going to just bring it in with the folder identification. It's easy then. Shot one, two, three, and four. So you go to it and then you just bring it in, and then I drag and drop it underneath. Obviously, something's gone wrong here. Like I say I've got an old laptop, so it does chug away sometimes. That's not good. Maybe. If this channel kicks off a bit and I've got a few extra pennies, I'll uh, invest in a stronger uh, tabletop or laptop. So here we go, we bring it in. Now, with the background being actual footage, I want to tunize it. So the software I use in here is the Red Giant uh, Tunit software. So sure it all loads in properly. As I can see with the frame at the back there's a little bit missing. I do try and mess around with it in a second just to uh, see if I can get them to match up but actually it's animated at 12 frames a second so it's on twos instead of 24. So with a one frame of mine lasts for two of theirs type of thing. After Effects sorts it all out for you. There's nothing lost in the back end of it. So it'll still all match up to the original footage when you add it all into time mode. So here we go, we're trying to find the tunic. Red Giant. I don't mess around with the settings much. There's lots of different types there. You can have the Roto effect, the Gaussian effect, all sorts. Your best bet, if you do have it, have a little play, see what you like. If not, an alternative is you can draw the background yourself. Obviously, if there's some movement in the background, could run it through EV synth, vibe synth, however you want to say it. But I'm a bit lazy here with just doing these tests. Uh, I am going to be doing some original work soon, but it's all time consuming and real life gets in the way of playing with these toys. So, yeah, as you can see, laptop's chugging away, bounces the background. I'm not too sure whether I like it or not. I'll try a few other things. Do like it, keep it. Yeah, I'm gonna look for some blur, put a bit of Gaussian blur on it. Just a high. 
hide it, smoke it, so it gives it some depth of field, so it's not so sharp. So it's contrasts against the main character Bond. And this is basically how I set up my shots in layers. I haven't used any camera movements or tracking just yet. Like I say, crappy old laptop. Really need to bump it up. It will work, but got the risk of it dying on you and I'm killing my laptop just to do a few of these isn't really worth it if yours is a bit meatier you can add all sorts of different effects like flares you've got to video copilot or there's some free lens flare options that are built in and after effects is an amazing program of compositing compositing easy for you to say Right, what am I doing now? Yes, I'm looking for a little bit of atmospheric effect. So in between the foreground and the background, in the midground, I'll put a smoke effect. Now I've got the smoke effect off YouTube. Downloaded it using the YouTube downloader, 1080p. It's on a black background. So what you want to do here, see so you've got the big bubble. So to get rid of that, just scale it up. That's the wrong way. That's the way. Scale it up. That way you've got a smoky haze in the background. Now what I do is I set this to screen, so the black is faded out, so you can see through, and then it's too prominent. So what I do is I knock down the opacity as well to 50%. So it's only a little bit of movement in the background, it just gives it a bit more atmosphere. Unless you're looking for it, you can't really see it, but it just gives the scene a little bit more. And then once that's there, I'll give it a little test to see what it looks like. Make sure you can see it and it's moving. And then I'll knock the opacity down. Yet again, my poor little laptop. Struggling a little bit. But obviously I've done this effect before, so I know what it looks like. So I know I can bump it down a little bit to play with it. To you, it's all your preference. I mean, if you want things flying around in the background or it's raining, maybe use a particular effect or CC rain which is built into After Effects, put it in the background, bring it to another one into the foreground, slightly enlarge it, move the timings a little bit so the rain in the background is falling faster than the rain in the foreground, it just makes it look as if it's got more depth to the actual footage. I'll have to find a little scene to try that one out. And then now I'm, what am I doing now? Rendering it out. So here, check your frames per second. I'll render it out in AVI here because it's native within After Effects. If you want your MP4 settings or your M.26 or whatever it is, you really need to uh, use the media encoder with this. Other compositing software like Hitchfilm and all that, I'm not sure whether you can just do that natively, I'm guessing you can. But After Effects is what I have, and After Effects is what I'm going to use. It's too much money to waste. <coughs> I was getting free. Especially if you're a student. You get trials and all sorts, so you can give that a look. So there we go, so I'm rendering it out into the folder, scene one. You can all render it all out into one massive folder, but things get a bit muddy, especially with rendering out clips if they're all named the same. Now the naming profile I've got on this is scene one, scene two, scene three. So it would be okay, but when you're rendering it out, it can get a bit muddy. Now here, I'm putting them all together. So I want to drag them all in, all the final compositions, scene one, scene two, scene three, uh, and then the actual footage. Set them up similar to the way I did scene one, background, and then you build up the scenes in order. You'll see in a minute, as I brought them all in, I try and match them up to the footage. So here I'm trying to find where the scene jumps from the opening shot to Bond standing, and there he is. And then I'm trying to flick it back, frame by frame, all the way until I find out exactly Bring it forward and then I can drop in the scene one. And then, as you can see, it'll fit nicely. Knock it along, there we go. Overlays on the footage. 
and scene two. I did this exactly the same way as I did scene one and scene three exactly the same way. I'm not going to show you me drawing it all unless you want me to show you drawing every single shot, speed it up, ramp it up. I might do a live stream when I have the time. But as you can see, the layers are there. Scene one, scene two, scene three. All nicely butted up and matching. So then you know the timing is right with the shot. Sometimes with EB Synth, it's not quite there, or you failed to match up the frames per second, or there's something amiss. So it's best if you've got it like I have, where you cut the scenes down, you've rendered the scenes out one by one, you put them in your own little composite. So instead of rendering one whole scene out, you've got three or four little scenes you can put together like this. Now when I was rendering through this, I recognised it's not quite matching. So you want to pick a shot with a nice mouth movement. And then you can match lip sync by switching on and off the layer with the background layer. That's why I think it's handy to have the background layer there. So you can pull the little computer chugging away, chugging away. But with this type, there's less error. flick to and from, you can swish it side to side, you can match everything up so it matches the audio or the music or whatever else you want to layer on top. It takes a little bit of fiddling but most compositing software does the same thing, it works in layers. So you work from the bottom up, the bottom being your base, your original footage and then you overlay, overlay, overlay. With this type, it's nice and easy because you've got shot after shot after shot, it's all changing. It's one continuous shot and you've got multiple assets all in the same shot. Instead of rendering all four people in the shot out at the same time, cut them out. One, two, three, and then overlay them and add them all in afterwards it's like this. It does take more time but the results are a lot better. Okay, I think what I'm doing here is I'm still not happy with the audio and I'm rendering it through, rendering it through, playing it, listening to the audio. As you can see in the top right hand corner, where my little mouse was then, it's red. That means it's not in real time. So because I can't hear it in real time, it's not rendering in real time. What I'll do now is I'll flick the image off. So that layer goes off, I can see his mouth, switch it back on, it's not lining up. What I need to do is I need to find the scene there, the original where his mouth's open the most. There I think it is. And then switch it back on. There we go, that matches up now. So I know now that about there, you see it closes, that's the deep of the open. So I need to shift it across one frame. If it was just slightly out, you probably would recognise if you're just watching it quickly because it is a short scene but it's best to be small otherwise somebody will call you out on it there we go the scenes match up now that was the scene I drew for this for the keyframe because the mouth's open the eyes are open if there's not much blinking or open and closed mouth and it just moves as talking there's not big any words like W's or L's where the tongue's visible, you can get away with one keyframe. Add a bit of highlights and detail into it and it could work. Now here, what I'm doing is I'm adding a cinematic box. You've got the references here for the different cinematic cuts. So like this one, obviously it's 16 by 9, but you want to cut it down to a more cinematic look. Plus I want to get rid of the film riot or film spot watermark there, where I pinched the, uh, the trailer from off YouTube, and then cut the box out, layer on top, solid layer, then mask it out, subtract the mask, it's a solid black mask, and there you go, you get your cin cinematic box, nice and easy, 
I mean, you could get a bit flashy and you could put a vignette underneath it or some drop shadow to make it look a bit more three-dimensional, but the cinematic box works for me. And that's the basic shot setup. Now with the bottom layer being actual footage, I want to do like I did in the shot two, where I'll put Red Giant Tunic back onto it. Just to uh, cartoonize it, keep it all consistent. But with the uh, After Effects, an imagination, you can let it run wild. I mean, if you think the shot's looking a bit bland in the original, you can add light flares, you can add things flying around in the background. If it's raining, but you can't really see the rain in shot, you can add CC rain, like I said, smoke effects, people running around in the background that weren't there. With this technique with the EP synth, animating your own footage, animating yourself multiple times, wearing different things, putting on funny voices, it's sky's the limit. Now what I'm doing here is, the overall I've had an adjustment layer on the top and I've got obviously the red giant bullet title effects so I've put looks into it and this is where you do your post colour correction, add a bit of grain to it, uh, tie in the whole picture. As you can see my colour compared to the background it, it stands out too much so you want to tie it all in. I mean you can do this with other looks in any software do the colour correction by hand. I mean this just saves time. Get it all in, give it that bondy, nice bluey orange magenta cyan type look. Ties it all in very nicely. So what have I got to do now? I think that's about it. I think cartoonize it. Yeah the bottom layer I think. Let's see. Yeah, that's still the actual footage. So yeah, again, tune it, or you can draw it yourself. You can EV synth it yourself. If you want to tie it in perfectly, EV synth, EV synth it, or hand draw it. The more time you take, the better it's going to look. These short snippets and tutorials, they're just to give you an idea. If there's anything that you'd really like me to point out, work through, whether it's in After Effects, EV Synth, uh, Sketchbook Pro, uh, any other little, I use flipper clip on my tablet to a hand anime to draw, that's quite a good one, I've also got Pro, uh, Sketchbook Pro on my tablet, all these little things, I love my animation, drawing, compositing, special effects, as you can see, a little computer chugging away, I find something I like, you mess around with the settings. It's all stylistic, whatever you fancy doing for the, for the shot. Obviously Bond's quite a moody action movie. They like this look, so you dull your colours down to that. And instead of dulling the colours down as you draw them, you draw them as you would normally, skin colour, red, red, blue there, and then Use your colour balance afterwards to tie the shot, the foreground, the background, the midground, let it all tie in. I do apologise if I'm ramming, stammering on and getting all through this, but I made this tutorial and then, after the fact, put it all through. So, thank you for watching. I hope it's helped you out with a few things. If not, Sorry, let me know in the comments what you'd like to know and I'll try and put a little tutorial the best I can. My next project will be something, hopefully, of my own making rather than just doing these movie clips. But if you do enjoy these movie clips, uh, why not let me know what you want to see and I'll try to dig something out and give it a bash. Okay, till the next time. Peace out.